thank you for joining us on the Capital Update. We're joined by Representative Sheldon Johnson. Representative, nice to have you with us today. Great to be here on this beautiful uh, spring, summer day. It's about 80 degrees out. And, and this will be the last of the, this will be the last capital update of the session. And uh, we just got through uh, a couple weeks ago here with the end of the session, which was, you know, a, a little hectic just because there's a couple all-nighters there. But uh, it's sort of important to note that you know unallotments came back two weeks ahead of time, and you know we had been going sort of down a steady path here at the legislature and kind of a kink in the road when the unallotments came back and showed that plenty's moves were illegal last year. Yeah, that's right. I mean, we started this whole session with, uh, we came in with roughly a billion dollar uh, deficit or shortfall we had to take care of. And uh, what we did right from the get-go, um, the House and the Senate, and, and working with the governor's office is we managed to find about uh, $330 million in targeted cuts towards uh, pretty much right across all the different agencies with the exception of K-12 and, and nursing homes. And we did that right on the front end of the, uh, the session, which I think was effective and showed our, our willingness to work together to get some things done. Uh, what was interesting is what you just noted, and that was towards the end of session, we'd been waiting all session along to see what the state Supreme Court was gonna do on the governor's unallotment. Nobody was really quite sure what, because last session he unallotted 2.7 billion dollars um, and the state Supreme Court is going to you know do a ruling on that to see if it was legal or not well as you said uh, they determined that what he did was in fact was illegal and he overstretched his uh, executive authority so to speak and what that did was put in our lap uh, roughly ended up being another three billion dollars we had to cut so these all-nighters and all this work this last uh, few weeks, which was really quite intense, we had to figure out how to uh, do another uh, almost $3 billion in cuts, and we managed to do it through uh, some reform and targeted cuts, uh, some shifts and delays and payments and the like, but, but we did get it done. Um, we got it done in time, and we uh, preserved both nursing homes and K-12 education without any cuts. Right, and veterans as well. No and veterans, veterans as well, that's right. Yeah, and uh, I, I'm sure that was difficult. And now we were talking a little bit about how sort of you got the cuts done early in the session and some in the late time in the session. But a lot of what the middle part of the session uh, was spent doing was, you know, arguably the most important thing this session, which is getting some of the 200,000 Minnesotans who are unemployed right now back to work. Um, there were two jobs bills, uh, both early in the session. Can you talk a little bit about those? That's right. Um, the three things we were most interested in when we start session were jobs, jobs, and jobs because um, we really want to get Minnesotans working uh, back in the state, uh, paying taxes and taking care of their families and the like. Um, the first big bonding, or the first big bill we dealt with was the bonding bill. And from the get-go, we passed a bonding bill, the House and Senate, to the tune of about a billion dollars. The governor cut that down to around $650 million or so. Um, the city of St. Paul uh, came out so-so in -so kind of a mixed blessing. We uh, we were able to get some bonding money for the Ordway, I think for Como Zoo, and also on the east side of St. Paul for Metropolitan State University, some new classrooms. So that was a plus. One area that I'm hoping to get some uh, assistance with next year is the Phelan Keller Regional Park, which needs some upgrading. Mm -hmm. And that's the kind of thing that uh, this bonding money goes for. We figure from that bonding bill was about 20,000 jobs that were, uh, were picked up or put people back to work. So that's pretty cool. Um, the other thing had to do with, with tax reform, and uh, we were able to move forward on some tax reform, some tax changes that had to do with encouraging private investors to invest in small businesses and entrepreneurship, and also something called the uh, Historic Tax Re Rehabilitation Bill, which allows for restoring historic structures, and, and that has turned out to be in other states a major, major economic boon and a way to put people back to work and that was good to see. Yeah, definitely getting creative there and um, sort of along the same path as we're talking about sort of growing and developing Minnesota and these were some high-tech angel, you know, the angel investor tax credit. A lot was done in telecommunications this year. We, you and I were talking before this a little bit about broadband goals mm -hmm. and some pretty lofty goals here for developing a you know good in internet infrastructure in Minnesota. That's right. This is a committee that I chair and I've been involved with for a while now, learning the ins and outs of telecommunications. And one of the things I've wanted to see, uh, in terms of state policy, is that broadband internet, uh, the pipes through which uh, 
cable TV and often much, much of our phone service as well as uh, our video service runs through that this is expanded throughout the state so everybody has access, that we have universal access to broadband. Um, this is one of the goals that we put forth in the state both in terms of what we call deployment access so folks have access to broadband and speed. We want to move the deployment up so that we're one of the top five states in the nation for access and one of the top five states in the nation for speed. That's one of the goals that we have set in state policy. I think it's kind of exciting to have that have that in place. It so, is and we're kind of at a interesting time here because you know with the federal stimulus money there's gonna be a lot of hopefully new projects moving forward with broadband. That's one of the identified. That's right. We want uh, we want speedy broadband. We want it deployed everywhere. Now the other thing I think the other uh, major component we really want to see is competition. We don't want to see broadband or internet services controlled by just one or two companies, whether it's, it's a cable company or a telephone company. We want to do what we can to provide competition so it can also bring price down because if it's not affordable, it's not going to be accessible and that's going to be a goal that uh, we look forward to pursuing here in the state of Minnesota. Yeah, and now on the other side of the telecommunications, I mean, that was, that's a lot about the broadband, but you also did something that sort of more relates to public safety that, this year. Um, it was based on a Kansas tragedy. Can you talk a little bit about that? It's called the Kelsey Smith Bill, and what it does, it requires uh, cell phone providers to provide call location information to law enforcement in the case where there's been a kidnapping or some missing person. In the past, it's been up to the uh, the cell phone providers to provide this information. This makes it clear to these companies that in an emergent situation, because the first few hours are most important, that they get this information to law enforcement so we can solve and deal with these very difficult and tragic cases. Yeah. Well, uh, we're just about out of time here. What are you going to do this summer? Uh, tennis, bicycle, uh, swimming. I'm going to hit the state parks, um, generally enjoy life, and of course, campaigning. Yeah, busy summer. Busy summer, but a fun summer. Yeah. Well, I'm Nick Halter. This is Sheldon Johnson. Thanks for joining us. Hopefully, we'll see you next session. I'll be here.